זהו גם כן ההסבר, this is the reason why, okay, be with me please, this is the reason why, שפרה אדומה, so when did they get the 13 attributes of mercy? Moshe said, God, how can I pray? These Jewish people did the worst sin possible, they heard directly from you, not to worship idols, and they all did, <coughs> one way or another, they participated. How can I forget, bring them forgiveness? So God said, I'm going to give you the secret of the 13 attributes of mercy. And that's what the red cow contained. When the red cow was sacrificed, it draw, drew down the 13 attributes of mercy. Because the Jewish people on Mount Sinai, they brought death back into the world. Don't bite your nails. Jewish people, they brought, they brought death into the world. At Mount Sinai, death stopped. It was the way it was when God created the world. It was not supposed to be death. When Adam ate from the tree, he brought death into the world. When God gave the Torah, he took death away. When the Jews worshipped the golden calf, they brought it back again. Why did they bring it back? Because it, it's too hard to live with Hashem all the time. Just living with God means you have to always be <coughs> active and proactive and positive. And you have to make a lot of the decisions, your right decisions. And you, the, the, the world is just filled with obligations and responsibility. Can't waste time. Right. They say that there was a joke. I heard a joke that God really gave to Moshe. 20 commandments. There were 20 commandments. Don't be lazy. Don't be nosy. Don't, right? And <laughs> don't gossip. Don't this. And there was, they were too heavy, though. Too heavy. So Moshe took out a chisel. He chiseled away 10 of them. He left the rest of them down. Took only ten now. Don't be stingy. Don't be. Uh, don't complain. Rabbi, this they worship the woman as well uh, as the golden calf. It talks about how they worship the woman, the golden calf. No, 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 no woman, no one. That's a mistake. I know somebody told you that, but it's not. Okay, let's go. Golden calf. So they, in other words, what is this golden? What is this? What does this uh, red cow do? What does the red cow do? It comes and it fixes up the sin of the golden calf. But why would it be a cow? The golden calf was a golden <clears throat> It says that cow. when why the... Why would they have a cow to purify? So the Rashi says over there that let the mother come up and clean up the filth of its child. The child was the calf, golden calf, and the mother is the mother cow. Okay. <clears throat> now you can ask why did they pick a golden calf in the first place? Why didn't a calf? Why didn't they make a golden lion or... A golden statue or something like that, a pillar. It says, when the Jews came out of Egypt, they saw the chariot of God. The chariot of God has a face of a lion, a face of an eagle, a face of a man, and a face of an ox. The dominant face on the faces of the, these, uh, the, this chariot is the face of the ox. So they saw the face of the ox. And that's why they said, these are the gods that took you out of Egypt. Right? There are ten commandments. The first of the Ten Commandments is, don't, I am the God that took you out of Egypt. And the second commandment is, don't worship any other gods. So the Jews cannot worship any god except for that one that took out of, out of Egypt. You listening? Yeah. What happened when they made the golden calf? What did they say? <laughs> These are the gods that took you out of Egypt. Here it is. The golden calf, this is the god that took you out of Egypt. Why? Because they, when they went out of Egypt, they all saw the face of the ox on the chariot. Look in the prophecy of uh, Isaiah, e Ezekiel. We just read it recently. <clears throat> saw the face of the ox. Therefore, the red cow <coughs> fixed up <clears throat> death, I mean, could you imagine that? The people wouldn't die. Usually you tell people, if they wouldn't have sinned with a golden calf, nobody would die. What do people I say to you? No one would die. Right? That's the way life is supposed to be. No one would die. Is that a good thing or not a good thing? I mean, overpopulation. Terrible. What? Terrible. Bad thing, because people have their time. Olam Harbor is better than this war. Very good. Okay, what do you think? Uh, Maybe the golden calf was a good thing. It brought death into the world. Because if everyone 
for sure gave money, gave gave uh, livelihood to the funeral houses. That's huh? if everyone was still alive, there would be overpopulation. Overpopulation. Lack of food. Food. Lack of water. Right. But nobody would die because people don't die. They would no, live forever. Lack of land. Everyone would be suffering. <laughs> They'd just be suffering and cold and miserable and they couldn't die. Right? <laughs> so, the, listen, the answer to the question is like this. The only reason we say that death might be a good thing, I mean, the after it's here, so we have to find something good in it. You know, after we find, we have to find something good in it. It gives a person what they call a deadline. Right? Put, people don't put things off forever. At least they know that they have a... But essentially, what, what's, the, what, what's the big problem? People nowadays think, you're never going to die. Ooh, that's going to be boring. It's going to be terrible. Right? Never die, just every day. What would you do when you're... <clears throat> what are you going to do? Right? So many times that... Yeah, let, let, let's co- play baseball. Ah, oh, we did that already for 5,000 years. Let's do something else. Right? Another 20,000. Right? No, the answer is... If people, one, why do people die in fact? Why do people die? Why do people die? The death came because people worried. They worried. They worried about the future. They didn't put themselves in the hands of God. So God wants us to be his partners. So they started dying so they wouldn't have to worry about the future. Right. The worry, it says, worms eat a person after he's dead and worries eat a person up when he's alive. The, the Jews were in the, the desert. Maybe Moses is not going to come back. What's going to be? Where are we going to be? Let's make a golden calf. They were so empty and confused, and they made a golden calf. And God said, okay, you know, I see you can't get along with the world. I'll take you out of it. The fact of the matter is is that this world is infinitely better and infinitely more happy and infinitely more spiritual than all the spiritual world, than Gan Eden going to heaven and all that. Going to heaven, that's just, I don't want to say it for sissies. Right? As as you go out to heaven, eh, it's like for old folks' home. Yeah, you get your benefits, you get your chuckle, whatever you get, your, ch- your chuckle. Right? Everything is nice. This world is the place where God is revealed. This is the world where the ra- raising of the dead is going to be. That's what Jewish people believe. The raising of the dead is the best thing that can possibly be. It's so good we can't even imagine it. Because we'll appreciate every second will be brand new. Every second will be exciting. We'll see the godliness in every instant. And we're part of it. And not only that, we have an obligation not just to appreciate, but to contribute. To contribute. As far as food in the world goes, right? So I've, I've said this before a lot of times, but I heard a very interesting argument. What did you want to say? When Mashiach comes, it's, like it's supposed to be that every dead person, every dead Jew that in the past will come back alive and be brought to you. But that's the end. No, yeah, that's the end. But no one will die. Death will no longer. No one will resist. Be a thing. That's right. So we're going to have that issue. That's right. That's right. But it won't be an issue. It won't be an issue. It'll be the ultimate happiness that there could possibly be. Impossible to understand because life is such an amazing gift, and we don't appreciate it at all. We don't appreciate anything. What do we appreciate? Well, lucky, maybe, we appreciate, right? Waking up in the morning, you, if you have a, 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 you're, you have a sickness, you're cold, you have hemorrhoids or something, they go away. Oh, the most happy person in the world. You have an ingrown toenail, and it goes away. Oh, I'm so happy I have an ingrown toenail. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't sleep, and now I appreciate life. What about all the time? What about all these millions of people, billions of people that don't have ingrown toenails and they don't have these things, right? Why aren't they happy? Eh, leave me alone. Right? Exactly the opposite. They're miserable. People are miserable all the time. The most miserable creation in the world is a human being. <coughs> human being is the most miserable creation in the world. You can give him everything he wants, everything that he wants, everything that it is, and he's miserable, he commits suicide, he goes crazy. Right? He's complaining all the time. He wants to change his, his sex, he wants to change his mind, he wants to change his hair, he wants to change his nose, he wants to change everything. That's politically not correct. <laughs> oh, God. Want to change his political party, his affiliation. I don't think that's politically correct. Politically. Listen. That's because you can't. God made you who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. Transgender is 100% politically incorrect. No, well, let's, let's not talk about that. Because what you said, 
that's what is political correct. To be to who you are. Right, the language is confusing. To be who you are, that's incomplete. That's that's what it is. Right, say be a man. You better not say that here because that's in. Pro- come on, be, let's come on. Let's let's. That's uh, totally off the subject. Totally off the subject. Zachariah, what's going today? Huh? <coughs> today you must. You must uh, something must have happened. Something must have happened today. You, you, somebody flipped a switch or something. I don't know. What. <coughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell him to give me less gas next time. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Zachariah, you're great. Everybody loves you. You're wonderful. Okay, let's go. Here we have the commandment of the paraduma. The paraduma, the red cow, is a little bit of a taste of the raising of the dead. It's a pure revelation of godliness that deal, does away with the impurity of death. Now, just one small thing. The saddest thing, one of the big signs of Tuma and Tahora, Tuma and Tahara, Tahara means purity, Tuma is sadness. That's why the Hasidim did everything they could to avoid being sad. Tuma is sadness. Sadness comes from egotism. A person thinks about himself, he worries about himself, he's doing about himself, he wants to improve himself, he wants to go himself, and I, and I think, I want, I do, I know, I can, I, 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 right? And that eventually makes a person miserable. It makes a person miserable. No matter how much he gets, he always wants more, he's always going to see somebody who has more than he has. He's always going to be miserable. A person that thinks about the Creator, and he's happy with what God gives him, <clears throat> and then he's happy if he has nothing, and he's happy if he has a billion dollars, and uh, of course, a billion dollars is better. It's better being happy with a billion dollars. Usually it's the opposite or way around. People who have billion dollars are less happy than people who have nothing. They have a bunch of money they're worried about. Somebody's going to take it. Maybe I'm going to lose it. Maybe. So the idea is, is nothing in this world can fulfill spiritual lacking. If a person is lacking something spiritual, everybody's lacking something spiritual. And because we're in the world in order to fix up the world to fix up ourselves. So anything in the world is not going to help it. That is called death. Death is relying on the world to fulfill your spiritual needs. That's death. And that's why the Jewish people made the golden calf. Isn't death technically like a relief from the... It's literally just a relief from the world, isn't it? It depends what you mind. It depends what the person is. We talked oh, about yes. this before. You're going to go into the next no, Life is all like, oh, get so miserable, and even if you have everything. You can, <coughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a simple bad. question. What if it could be that a person could be programmed or, or even attached to a, a machine that gave him opium all the time, just dripped morphine. morphine, morphine all the time, dripping morphine all the time, and he's just sitting there happy, happy, happy. And they have another tube also that gives him nourishment, gives him nourishment, and he's just sitting there happy, happy, happy his whole life. That's not <laughs> one minute, one minute, one minute. Happy, 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 happy all the time. That's something like being in heaven. But that's not real happiness. happiness ha- heaven is also not real happiness. What do you mean? <clears throat> Having a, happiness, true happiness is being partners with the creator of the universe. That's true happiness. So when we're descending <clears throat> to heaven, then we're going to be a part of Hashem. So you're not, no, 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 no. You're not partners. You're... Receiving drips. Hashem is giving you the the the, the morphine, whatever He's giving. No, it's not morphine. It's, it's a shem. It's it's a shem. Shem. It doesn't make any difference. A person, the essence of a human being is responsibility. When a person is responsible to, to God, and he can fulfill that response, and everyone's responsibility to God, a person is a and he fulfills that responsibility. If he realizes what he's doing, he's happy. If he doesn't realize what he's doing, he's not. But a person that, let's say, he's in Auschwitz, or the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, when he was in concentra- he was in Siberia, right? <clears throat> he was in Siberia, right? And he thought, you have to read what he wrote. <clears throat> he said, when he went in, he said, what's happening to me? What's going to happen to the Hasidim? What's going to happen? And suddenly he said, what am I thinking these negative thoughts for? I am doing the same thing as Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, as the forefathers. I'm suffering from Judaism, and he was happy. Of course, he wasn't happy that he wanted to have more suffering. Right? He didn't want to have more suffering. But the suffering that he did have, it was inescapable. <clears throat> inescapable. So he realized, this is suffering that's coming from God. If he died, then he would have left the suffering. He would have right, but then he wouldn't be serving God anymore. He wouldn't be partners with God. He would have no problems. 
He would be on the, on the opium. Exactly. Yeah, but he wouldn't have any problems. World. And having problems is not such a bad thing. In this world, to be on opium is not a good thing. No. In the next world, I don't yeah. know. Maybe something okay, it's a different type of opium. It's a different kind of dimension. Yeah. In this world, we want to be functional. If you're stuck in the next world, it's good. But the fact is, is that when only here in this world can you serve God and can you make God happy. That's what the Baal Shem Tov says. That's what the Baal, that's the that's the policy of the Baha. Huh? You know, one third of all in the next world. Yeah, you, you, you have a package. I know where it is. One of the mitzvahs is he in 